I sent this MacBook Pro out for repair and it was under warranty. Apple did its thing, shipped it out, got it back like a day later. Everything was smooth and looked like it took care of the issue that I was encountering. I started using the laptop and I noticed that sometimes I would feel this tingling sensation in the area above the function keys and around the uh, adjacent to the trackpad. And as I investigated it a little bit more through usage, I noticed that, well, it was only really occurring when it was plugged in. And if I put my finger on there and, and was actually perceiving the sensation and then immediately disconnected power, it went away instantaneously. So that perked my ears up definitely to better understand what was going on. So I took to the internet, which was, wow. There are a lot of theories about what is going on and they cover more than just Apple laptops. They actually, you know, people have this issue with HP laptops, Dell, Asus. I even saw a couple of people commenting about Razer laptops. So it's, it's not something that is specific to Apple laptops. It seems to pertain to laptops that are either metallic, like this one, or that are plastic, but are, that have some sort of, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They have some sort of, is it electrostatically? I'll put it down in the lower third. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on what I was going to say, but it's the process of actually adding a metalized finish onto a plastic. That led me down the path of, okay, fine, that's kind of the type of laptops that it's happening with, what is going on with this particular laptop that would make it start exhibiting these, this behavior when before, when I had it, it didn't exhibit this at all. So I started to get my tools out and figure out what was, what was going on. When it's charging, it is most perceptible when it is plugged in directly to a power outlet using this particular adapter. And this adapter is just fine. There's nothing wrong with it but it's more perceptible with the this adapter than it is with the Apple one, but the Apple one I still notice it with, and when I'm using the anchor cable. Let me get it plugged back in again. It's charging. The first thing I was interested in measuring was when I'm sensing something, I'm getting a little bit right now, just a little bit of buzziness. It just feels like a vibration. We can verify that by doing a few quick tests, knowing that this is connected with a two-prong plug with no earth ground, two mains AC. I took measurements by looking at the, can I get this just in the view of the camera? There it is there. There's my power squid off to the left, connecting to earth ground on one lead. And then looking at what voltage there was, what what's the potential, the electrical potential, that is voltage of this chassis relative to ground, which is zero volts. And so I probed around and I was doing a whole bunch of different tests where I was doing, you know, taking the laptop and doing this sort of thing. And then I realized that very short order that the anodized finish generally on this laptop generally has a high impedance state and provides a sort of insulation on the surface. Once you get past the insulated state, and let me get into the little holes here. There you go. So you can see that I'm now past, I'm in the little speaker grill holes. And if I probe past the anodized finish, because the speaker holes are just drilled out, then you can see you get continuity across the chassis. So the chassis is conductive, not right on the surface because it has an anodized finish and the areas that are not metal, like the keyboard and the, the glass trackpad, definitely are not conductive. So, I started looking at the voltage at one of these points that is not part of the anodized chassis. We get a voltage of 56 volts once we get past that insulative coating, the anodized coating. And if I touch the surface, you can see the voltage drops. My finger's now on the chassis. And that's because, again, this is not, the anodized finish has 
impedance, but it's not completely insulative. So a large surface area like my finger, it you know, my body's interfacing with earth, earth ground, and so I then drop that voltage. And if I come to a, cl a closer location where there's a lot of uh, those, yeah, I can make it drop a little bit more. And then it comes back to 56 volts. So 56 volts AC isn't a, cr it, it's a moderately high voltage. Generally speaking, six, 56 volts, even if your hands are wet and your body's in a really low impedance state, this is not enough really to cause injury or anything like that. But it is enough to potentially cause sensation. After I saw that voltage, I was a little surprised, I'll admit. But I tested this on my wife's laptop, a MacBook, same thing, I'll put a screenshot. Uh, about 56 to 58 volts, depending on if it's charging or not, whatever. So it's about, we'll say 58 volts AC. Let's find out now how much current is flowing. So we know that there's this voltage present on the, on the, on the surface of a laptop. And in fact, you might even have seen some videos where people are saying that there's an electrocution hazard because they use a non-contact voltage detector or a voltage presence detector and say, that they put it near their laptop and it started telling them that there was high voltage. So here's a, here's a, whoops, it's gonna start doing this already. But here is a, let me turn it off first. <laughs> here is my Unity UT210E, say that five times fast, True RMS uh, ACDC mini clamp meter with uh, 100 amp current capacity, which is pretty awesome. It has a non-contact voltage detector, which works way better than the Ampro one, so I'm gonna use it, but show you that Whoops, if I bring it close to the laptop, it starts to beep and tell me there's voltage present. Whoa, look at that, really high when I get over there. It's detecting an electric field. So, how much current is available? If this was dangerous, anything over a milliamp would be cause for concern. Above five milliamps, you're in, you're in trouble. And then, yeah, as you go beyond that, you can look online and see what what sorts of things happen when you go too far with passing current across your body. We're gonna run this in a way that is not exactly like a leakage current test because we're not accounting for body impedance. I'm gonna do this two ways. One, because it's hard to run, I have multiple probes in my disposal right now. So we'll do it two ways. I'm gonna do it one way by just sticking the probe onto the chassis, which doesn't account for body capacitance. So it's gonna make the, the, the current look a little bit lower than it actually is. As I touch this to, to ground, instead of measuring a potential, this is measuring current flow to earth ground. So when I touch the chassis, I provide the laptop's chassis a path to ground, th therefore discharging any potential energy that's on the chassis. That's the first way I'm gonna test it, just so we can get a, a what is the c continuous leakage current. The second way I'm gonna test it is actually, it's kind of a quick and dirty way to sort of get what the amount of current would be with a little bit of resistance and capacitance, which is putting the probe on my thumb and touching the laptop case with my finger. Let's just take this and probe right around. Oh, I'm in DC mode, I need to be in AC mode, because we're looking at AC voltage. So let's look at AC current. Looking good so far, 2.1 microamp. Okay, a little higher, 67 microamps. We need to be at like 999 microamps, right? Almost one milliamp to be of any concern. I would say above 150 to 200 microamps, I would be surprised and it would be kind of an indicative of not the best design but we're looking at 67, it's pretty low. And if I go right next to the power connector, it is still like 68, a little higher, but you know, one microamp higher, right? Is that where we're at? Well, one microamp higher, whoops, let me get it back into the non-anodized section. Yeah, about one microamp higher. I'll take my probe, put it on my thumb, and then touch to the chassis. And you can see with a little bit of capacitance and resistance that the current's actually lower, 53.7. And I have a lot more surface area with my finger than I did with the probe. Here, 52, 53, it's not very high. And if I go somewhere on the chassis where I'm not touching 
areas or getting my finger kind of into the areas where there's a non anodized finish, then it actually shows that there's a little bit of resistance there across the anodized finish that's lowering the amount of available current to about 35 microamps. So it raises the question, why would I feel something on this laptop and not feel something on my wife's laptop or not feel something on this laptop when I was using it for the 11 or 10 months before I had sent it in for service? And this goes for many of the other laptops that are out there that people have experienced this with. And it comes in a variety of different possibilities that all contribute to why you might feel some sort of sensation when you're using a laptop like this. One is perhaps the laptop either was repaired or the laptop that you had when it was manufactured did not have proper bonding of the chassis or all the metal components inside the laptop itself back to the return path that is on the DC side of the power supply. So instead of all the stray electrical noise and stuff that's being generated inside this laptop all being properly conducted back through a low impedance path to the return of the DC supply or dissipating it within the laptop using a variety of techniques. And so what I think happened in this case with this laptop is that something when they reassembled the top case, which in the repair notes it does indicate that they replaced the top case, it seems like they did not bond this top case back to the chassis ground, so to speak, even though it's not an earth ground, it's a return path on the DC, DC supply, the common. And what that's resulted in is this top chassis carrying a little bit of a voltage and that's permitting that voltage to carry just enough current behind it so that when I touch it, you get current flow into your fingers and it dissipates quickly as it goes into your body, but it's enough to have a, get a sensation. Additionally, you could just be very sensitive to the charge buildup because every human has a different level of sensitivity to an electrical charge. So why is it safe to use this laptop? And the answer is because the transformer inside the power supply has insulation in it and a construction that ensures that the high voltage components are separated from the low voltage components. Hopefully what you've seen here helps illuminate the fact that yes, while you might detect something on your computer, you might feel something, it doesn't mean that it's electrocuting you and it does not mean that it is shocking you because the available current is just so incredibly low and the voltage is low too. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, then uh, throw them down there and I'll take a look. That's it for now. Take care.